Littleton. Uh, the town of Littleton began conducting remote participation Zoom meetings pursuant to Governor Baker's emergency order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law on March 19, 2020. Since that time, unanticipated legal concerns related to the open meeting law have been brought to our attention by the town clerk. These concerns are supported by the Attorney General's office and confirmed by town council. One concern is that the chat function allows a parallel text conversation to the board's public meeting. Chat is essentially running commentary that is occurring but is not moderated or followed by the chair. All participants and listeners may not be aware of the comments being made because some meeting participants join by phone and do not see these conversations. Another concern is conversations between residents within the chat room which are not incorporated into the public record. In response to these concerns, the town will implement the following changes which in no way prohibit any member of the public from participating in discussion and sharing information during a public meeting and will ensure that all listeners and participants have equal access to this meeting. People that join the Zoom meeting are all are, um, are set so that the microphones are muted. If you call in by phone, use star six to mute or unmute your phone so that the meeting can occur in an orderly fashion. We ask that people who join keep their microphones on mute so background noises do not interfere with the meeting. If you wish to participate in the meeting, please use the raise your hand function available on Zoom, or if you call in by phone, dial star nine, which will activate the raise your hand function. The meeting host will notify the chairperson of the raised hands, and the chairperson will determine whether and when to allow public comment. When, it's, when called upon, participants should unmute, state their names and address. After speaking, we request the participant return their microphone back to me. All right, so it's seven o'clock. Hi, Jim. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, we have a discussion with the um, Littleton Water Department um, regarding the water treatment plant. And I think Ivan mm -hmm. and, I don't know, is Nick going to be here tonight too? Just Ivan. Here, I'm here. Kevin, what did you put on for them, Kevin? I'm sorry, what? What did you put on for them? Oh, yeah, that, I have that magic button on my. No, I have the magic button on my phone. I can just turn it off, and they all just go crazy. It's one of those, one of those things. All right, so Ivan, you had um, you had sent us a letter that you wanted us to um, look at to send to Senator Eldridge. Did everybody get a copy of that and get to read that? I don't, I don't know if I got that. I don't remember seeing a copy. I'm sorry. I, I, I didn't see a copy either. Oh. Um, did I just get one? Get it? You're the boss, yeah. Okay. I don't recall seeing one either, so I'm not sure it came to me. <laughs> All right. Um, so I'll, Ivan, can you send that to the board? Uh, yeah, I can do that. I can find it and I can send it to Janet. So, um, so okay. Do you want to read it or t tell us a little bit about it? What's going okay, on? Okay, so yeah, basically, um, <clears throat> this is in reference to our treatment plant um, that we're trying to build uh, on Whitcomb Ave uh, to upgrade the Whitcomb Ave facility. Um, the treatment plant will um, take care of PFAS uh, amongst uh, uh, other um, uh, water uh, items as well. Um, so this has um, been going on for a little bit. Um, last fall town meeting, we um, we had approval uh, from the town, uh, Board of Selectmen, uh, Conservation, uh, of course our board, uh, I believe your board as well. Um, where we are right now is it, it's going to the, the um, uh, the bill um, 4866 is going through legislative approval. Um, it went through uh, the House. It's in the Senate right now. It's had uh, two readings. It needs one more final reading. 
uh, and, and vote before it uh, goes off to the governor uh, for signature. So this is a letter, uh, it rests right now with uh, our Senator, uh, Senator Eldridge, um, and uh, we are sending um, uh, letters to him, um, you know, uh, again, reminding him of the, uh, uh, the, uh, the health impacts uh, with PFAS and um, uh, asking that he, uh, um, you know, make this a priority in getting this through the, uh, through the process. Uh, Board of Selectmen are, are doing a similar letter uh, and we have uh, from uh, Board of Water Commissioners uh, as well. So we, uh, we drafted a sample letter for you guys to look at um, and, um, uh, you know, make any changes um, uh, you see fit before, uh, before sending it off. And that's basically the, the overview. Oh, I'm sorry, my bad. Um, I should have sent that to Janet to have it sent. So... Um, I just sent it to Janet, and she's going to email it to all of you guys. So read it, maybe um, make some changes if you think anything needs to be changed. Ivan, do you, if we're in a rush, Ivan, do you want to screen share your screen and just put it up? No, no. Um, I think I think uh, if you guys want to, um, uh, you know, take a look at it. I don't want to, you know, I. I don't want you to, you know, go through it and uh, just tonight, you know, take a look at it and then, you know, maybe over the next few days, um, come up with the consensus. And, you know, if we could get this uh, uh, sent out, we'd ask you, you know, over the next week to two weeks, it'd be great. Is there a drop dead uh, deadline? Like I know a lot of people are waiting. Well, we're... So right now, yeah. So right now, we're um, the the Senate is not in session. Um, they're going to they're going to be calling a session at some point, uh, probably with COVID issues. Um, so uh, we're hoping that um, and Senator Eldridge has has uh, uh, spoken to us about um, you know moving this forward and hopefully getting it on that that next session. So. Um, you know, we're hoping by, uh, by middle of September that we have, um, uh, we have some movement in the Senate. Uh, so, you know, if, if, if you could get something to him, uh, you know, like I said, in the next week, week and a half, that would be great. So should we make a motion to carry, continue this to our next meeting, September 2nd? Um, I'd, I'd like you guys to, um, Janet just emailed it to all of you. Um, so how would we edit it if we, were, um, if we needed to, Janet, and how would we sign it? Would we just get a um, consensus and um, we would just sign it the Board of Health? Lee, uh, so you sorry. are meeting next. Sorry, this is, um, I'm sorry, this is Mike. I just, I just read the, the, the composite, the, the letter that Nick Lawler put together. And it looks like uh, <clears throat> anyone, I mean, it, it's a fairly easy thing to edit to make it reflect the view or the position of the, of the, of the Board of Health. Uh, this is very specific. The letter is composed is very specific uh, and refers to things that only Nick and his colleagues would know about by having had contact. So I think this could be edited by the chair or the, <clears throat> the vice chair very easily. Um, with no difficulty at all, and perhaps, perhaps I, don't, the, uh, think, I, I don't see this being, shall we say, requiring any more delay than <laughs> unless you go rogue and decide you don't want to support it. But other than that, this is this is a very easy letter to to edit. I think it might be the clerk's uh, job responsibility. Oh, ooh. I'll be very happy to do it. I'll just cut it short to three lines. Get your you job done. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You're a mean, Mike. I didn't get that, Janet. Did you afford it? Just, just a couple minutes ago. Uh, I didn't get it. So weird. So, um, it's up to you. Whatever. I mean, I'll be very happy to add it, give it to you and. No, I whoever. think it's. Pretty, I think it's all pretty black and white, and um. Yep. But I well, yeah. Mike, do you want to give a quick synopsis what uh, what it would read, and we can all just 
Sure. Um, basically, it's, 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 <clears throat> just what we said, we are, we are glad that you're playing very close attention to age 4866 um, and have, have had the opportunity to have Littleton's Water Department explain um, the significance and importance of this bill to the town. Um, it is clear to us that you are, that just as the letter says, fully committed to the residents and have access to clean water and that, that you want just as, as the letter is composed. Um, and the only time I, I, I think uh, that it needs any further change, I'm looking further down, uh, would be basically that it says this is community that demands, I would probably change it, that expects um, these, this kind of this, this quality of water uh, from not only the water department, but the board of health. And we're proud to be associated with a project that is embraced by everyone um, th that has voted in favor of this legislation. And the rest of it is, it would basically be the letter, but it's just inserting in board of health where it's appropriate. You wanna throw in a, throw in a 310 CMR 22? Yeah. Massachusetts drinking water regulations and just the board. I, I would not enter anything more than what the right. um, than what the uh, water department water commissioners have put in their letter. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't wander off. Can you um, and Janet, how would we all sign it? Would we just edit it? Mike could edit it and then send it out to everybody for their edits and then approve it, and then we just sign it, Littleton Board of Health? Or do we have to actually sign it? Chair, the chair can um, Empower you to sign it once yeah. it gets approved. The chair can be empowered to, to sign the letter. Okay, so I, I'm just wondering, do we have to do, I mean, I don't have a problem doing it in person, but it needs to be edited, and then I come in and sign it. We can, get it out. we can do can that you, as can you sign electronic it? document signing either way. Okay. Do you mind doing that, Mike? I can set up. I can set I up can. electronically if you want. Okay. Lisa, if you, if you'd like, I'll, yeah, I'll send it. I'll send it to Janet and a copy it to you, and then you can do with what what you'd like. All right. All right. I have a question for Ivan, if that's all right. <laughs> Sure about this letter because we're going to move on to the um, well regulations that we just. Uh, yeah, it's just really quick. Yeah, uh, uh, what what are the current levels of the PFAS? Uh, so we have the temporary um, blending uh, Mixing. installed at this point. Yeah. So we are below twenty parts uh, per trillion um, in our samples. So is that only on the seven that are? I'm sorry. Is that only on the seven that are like really harmful? Is that only on the seven chemicals that are really harmful, or is that on the it, whole on, spectrum of the? On, no, it's uh, on the ones that I don't know the exact quantity that we're testing. Uh, the Corey is testing, but it's that subset of uh, the ones that we've been testing all along. Got it. All right, and Ivan, do you have any information? I guess we just got something you did too, and about the. Um, Council. Did you get that this afternoon? Uh, I did not. Okay. But in, re in reference to the regulations? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't see that. Um, should I read it? Yeah, or go ahead, Lisa. Go ahead, Lisa, so he can hear it. Okay. Um, for our... Uh, Hello, Janet. For our conversation earlier today, I discussed the amendments you had sent to town council in summary. Oh, this is from Joe, by the way. Um, in summary, the amendments would um, allow for the water department to enforce water bans on private wells. Town council said that while there is nothing preventing the Board of Health from amending its regulations to uh, designate the water department as its enforcement authority, the question that was raised was why not propose a general bylaw? Town Council's opinion is that a bylaw would be cleaner. I have reached out to the Water Department to find out if there is more backstory on why the Board of Health regulation was proposed rather than adopting a bylaw. Unfortunately, I do not expect to be able to provide an update for the Board of Health to consider in whether to act on the proposed amendment. Perhaps this is deferred to the next meeting so that we can have more time to discuss on options for water ban enforcement. 
So, Janet, you said you talked to Joe today? I did. Um, I've been trying since, well, it's been several meetings, but I engaged Joe to try and help me right after the last meeting since I wasn't having any luck getting in touch with town council myself. Um, yesterday, he really um, put them to the fire and he just has some questions. And um, Tom Harrington was trying to get in touch with Nick today. And I guess they never, um, they never did connect. But, but essentially what Joe relayed to me is, is what he said in the email that there isn't, um, he doesn't believe there's a legal reason why the Board of Health can't, but he doesn't feel like it's solid ground and he really thinks the proper way to do it is through a bylaw um, with the water department and he really wanted more information before he would commit to um, a decision. So um, Joe's still trying to, to force, force the connection between them. So I'm letting them take the, take the lead at this point. So Joe was thinking, you know, postpone, postpone the discussion, another, another set of meetings. Is town council and retainer? <sighs> They're busy. Everybody's busy. Yep. <laughs> okay. So, so why don't I just reach out to Nick and uh, make sure he hooks up with, uh, with Tom Harrington and uh, we'll get that feedback and, um, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to you with uh, our thoughts on, on a bylaw. And uh, if that is the avenue we, uh, we go down, probably it's, it's gonna be best if we jointly do that uh, and we jointly, um, um, you know, present that uh, for town meeting when it's ready. Do we have time? What's the deadline for getting this onto the fall town meeting? Uh, yeah, I don't think we're going to have time to put something together because it's September 10th, but, but really the impact, of course, is for the summer. So I think uh, if we have to go down that road, let's have a May go a goal to have this done by April so it can be on a May town meeting. I was just going to add to the remark that I think we need to have uh, pu uh, public uh, access and hearings on any on, on this absolutely yeah uh, because you know this is not something i mean it's just more than plumbers it's owners and other folks who are wanting to know, know about this including the well owners so yeah. i think we we need to be as transparent as possible in in getting the feedback and in, in, in getting this bylaw to work is if that's what it turns out to be yeah and also we can use that time mike for education Absolutely. That's right. what I was. Yep. Yep. We'll do a two. We'll do a two for one there and, yep. and educate them as to why, why their private wells have an impact. Yep. I think it's just common sense not to water your lawn in the middle of the drought. I don't know. <laughs> I thought it was a lose lose situation. You have to pay for water and then you have to mow it too. So. Yeah. <laughs> and spray the green. So. All right, anybody else have any um, anything else to add about well, the water regulation, the well regulation for the water treatment plant? Jim, do you have anything you want to say? Or? So to Tom's point about the bylaws, uh, there is that 2018 DEP kind of model bylaw that could be adopted by communities, which seem to encompass both uh, uh, the you know, uh, the uh, water supplier and private well. So that may be a good place to start. I can send that out to all the board members. You can take a look at that. That's a good idea. Great. All right. Should we move? What time is it? Oh, it's we're we're ahead of schedule. Is he, Alicia here by any chance? Yes, I'm here. Hi, Gina. Alicia. Alicia was going to log on at seven twenty-five. I know. Okay. Uh, she is here. She's moving up right now. Go on to the COVID oh, updates. Okay. Is this is this okay that we move it up early? Um. Yeah. Is yes. Anybody Hanging out, waiting for Alicia at seven thirty. It's up she's to you. She's not wearing her sunglasses. She's not wearing her sunglasses. It doesn't count unless she wears her sunglasses. 
<laughs> oh, now we now we can move on. Yes, now that's. Fair. Um, can I ask? Did, did all the board members read the minutes? Maybe we could do the minutes while we're if for fifteen minutes. Yes, I I read it. I, that's I how they're doing it. Does that sound okay to everybody? Yep. yep. Yeah. Is that legal? Yeah. All right. Yes, uh, that's so, fine. <laughs> okay. So um, on our administrative matters, we're just going to skip ahead because we're a little running a little bit ahead of time. Um, we're going to um, vote to approve the minutes for the July 22nd, 2020 meeting and the August 12th, 2020 meeting. Um, need a motion? I make um, a motion to accept the 12 and the 20. So, 20, 20. Um, the July 22nd and the August 12th, you know? All right. Okay. I'll second that. All right. So we'll do a roll call. Um, by, so Kevin Baker. Abstain. What? Abstain. Kevin Baker, abstain. Did you not read them, Kevin? Uh, no, I read them. Okay. Um, Gino? Yes. Louise? Um, yes, for uh, the July 22nd, but I abstained from the August 12th. I wasn't there. You weren't there, right. And Mike? Uh, yes. Mike Zeldin, yes. And Lisa Flanagan, yes. So. Okay. That was nice and fast, everybody. What else can we do? COVID update. You'd have Jim do the COVID update. Hey, Jim, are you prepared to um, do the COVID update? Sure. So um, I guess we'll start with uh, the, the, the rate in the state, uh, the positivity rate in the state. Uh, fortunately, it's staying below 2%, um, which is very good to see. Over the weekend, the numbers looked a little weird, but that was because the state was doing maintenance on the MAVEN system. So uh, oh, yeah. all the cases got reported on Monday, so the number looked pretty high, and I was kind of happy that the news, when they reported on the news, they actually gave that disclaimer that this number looks high, but that's because it's uh, numbers for a couple of days, essentially. So, uh, and I think we've only had three cases in Littleton in the past 25 days. So um, again, still pretty low rates all around. Um, was up at the O'Neill theaters today with uh, uh, the Park and Rec, and Alicia will explain more about that later on, just to look at a remote uh, a learning site. Um, and we're working on fall flu clinics. Um, uh, as you may be aware that the state's really pushing hard to have kids, mandating kids essentially to have flu vaccines for entering the school year or by December, I think is what the end of December they need to have it. So uh, we're working as we typically have in the past flu clinics. Uh, we will probably end up doing one clinic that is like four hours long, try to have the beginning of the flu clinic be for population at risk, essentially a senior population, those older. Uh, and then have a couple hours uh, the second half of the clinic to make sure kids and families can get in and get vaccinations. So we're working at a time and date with the school um, and we'll be back to the board to get that squared out. And that's what I have for updates. I think the drive the drive through with CVS is just this fantastic idea. I can't, I can't believe Alicia that you got, you got them on board with that. Yeah, it was just one of those uh, knew somebody and it worked out. You want to tell us That's a little awesome. about that, Alicia? Yeah, if you're ready. Well, um, about the drive through the flu clinic? Yeah, I can. Sure. Um, so, uh, yeah, we were approached by someone that is a, a manager um, over in Westford, and um, they wanted to be able to work um, with us specifically because they knew that we were uh, going to be offering this monitored remote learning program, which we'll talk about later. Um, and, uh, again, the state requirement that everyone have the, the flu shot. So, um, you know, we know that parents are going to kind of be scrambling to try to get the kids in as soon as possible. Um, I believe that the date for that, and Jim, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is um, mid-November that that has to be completed by? I think that's supposed to be done by the end of December. December, okay. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> So, uh, you know, we were uh, working with them to try to set up something where we could easily schedule appointments and people could drive through, get it done, um, and just kind of like go about their day. So 
um, you know, that's something that, you know, we were approached about that and, uh, we definitely wanted to bring it to, uh, the board of health because we know that that's something that, you know, Jim had talked about that earlier, um, that that's something that, you know, is a responsibility of this board and, um, you know, we want to make sure that you're okay with it. And, um, you know, if anything, uh, you know, if you need involvement or want involvement, we'd love to have you guys. Um, so, uh, that's pretty much a rundown for it. So it's going to be in Westford though? No, uh, we're going to try if we can, uh, to have it at Russell street elementary school. Oh, okay. Just so it has a longer, um, car path. Mm -hmm. Um, and it does have the turnaround. So it'd be really easy to do like the one way traffic flow. Mm -hmm. I have a question for Jim. Yep. Um, what about the Littleton EDS? Will they also try to do a clinic for flu shots? So that, that's what I was talking about. Uh, we will end up doing a, a clinic for the town. Um, and, and I've talked to Scott today about, and he's going to touch base with uh, the schools, see which school best to do it at. And that's what I was talking about, that uh, four-hour block of time. So we could try to do populations at risk and then try to uh, get the uh, kids and families vaccinated later on. And we talked about having some of the volunteers from um, the uh, the emergency corps to help us out do that. And so this one, Alicia, is that just for um, children, the one you're going to do? Yeah, um, you know, getting ready for the school um, season. That yeah, that so we would focus on doing the children specifically. Um, but at this point in time, I think the last time we checked, we, there was like seventy five individuals, uh, maybe more, that were interested. So, you know, we're already looking at like a three hour uh, process here. So, you know, maybe this is something that we need to break up and do, you know, uh, every other weekend or try to find some additional times. We'll have to work with CBS to figure that out. And um, for Littleton residents only or? At this what time, yeah, Littleton residents only. Um, but that's something that, you know, if we really needed to look into that, um, you know, that's a possibility. We're always open to ideas. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay. Um, I have a quick question, if that's right. Uh, Alyssa, do you need more uh, support, volunteers, uh, folks that could help out? I know Tim was just saying that the more the merrier um but i just didn't know where, where you're at with that yeah i don't we just met this morning um to try to figure out um the best process to go through uh because cvs has their own forms that they need to fill out there has to be paperwork with insurance that's done ahead of time and all of those things so we're if a lot of that stuff is done ahead of time i'm not sure that we're going to need a lot of people um but if uh we definitely need help i'll come ask you <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I was just wondering, because I had this uh, this spreadsheet of, you know, residents with, like, occupations of doctors and nurses, and if that would help you, I could send it to you, and if you want to do a marketing thing. Yeah, so the, the one hiccup to this whole thing is that there's only one person that is um, licensed to be able to give shots um, or to give the shot. So you're looking at like one person, you know, going through this whole process. So I don't know. And that was one of the questions that we asked is that if we could find someone else that was able to do um, the vaccinations, you know, if they could help. Um, but I don't know what their policies are or if that's yeah, the last policy. Is, is that? CBS, it's a CVS policy or who has the policy we don't know we were just saying like if we could find somebody else that would speed up the process can we can we do that can we try to find somebody hmm. yeah, i'll send you a list of names and we'll reach out to them that'd be great hey alicia did you want to talk about the um, remote learning programs now yeah i can um so um one of the big things that, you know, we've been trying to work on uh, has been this remote learning um, program. And the issue is that we're running into is that a lot of parents are very concerned about um, being able to be able to work full time, um, you know, as both uh, parents and the household or guardians um, and, you know, still being able to provide that supervision for, for kids. So uh, it's really adding a lot of uh, stress. I think um, not only uh, pressure for, you know, what 
is supporting, you know, a family um, financially and, um, you know, well-being wise as well. So you know, one of the things that we've been thinking about is, you know, we've had this really successful summer program. Um, I'll mention it again, because we did talk about this um, at a previous meeting for the COVID-19 um, recreation working group, but there are, um, we're part of an organization called Massachusetts Parks and Rec Association. So there's about 400 towns and cities that are involved in um, that association, essentially 400 parks and rec departments. Um, and for all of us that ended up actually providing a summer care program, um, we had zero cases of COVID this summer. Um, and, you know, that's one of those things, you know, you're always afraid of making that statement because, um, you know, next day, but um, that, that's the reality. We've gotten through this entire summer um, and we've had zero cases um, as a state association. So I think that's pretty impressive. Um, so, you know, we want to be able to help the families in town and we also want to be able to help um, the Littleton Public Schools um, you know, to in, implement this uh, remote learning process if they're doing a hybrid process, or even if it's full remote, um, to be able to have that option to support parents. So um, we're working with uh, collaboration with O'Neill Cinema um, at uh, the point here in Littleton. And um, we would be able to actually run a program for the kids that are on um, the remote learning days uh, in the theaters. So the idea would be that uh, we would follow the exact school schedule um, as it's given. Uh, like I said, this would be a collaboration with Littleton Public Schools. Um, we have met with uh, Superintendent and, um, you know, Kelly Clenchy was very excited about the program and very supportive of it um, and would love to be able to move forward with it. So the next place that we get to uh, and, and part of the conversation that we had with uh, Jim uh, this morning was, you know, technically when you look at what this program is, it should be licensed by the EEC as a child care program. Um, mm -hmm. At this point in time, we as uh, parks and rec departments, we're not getting a lot of feedback from EEC. And I realized that you know, it's a, a really stressful time for a lot of people. And usually, especially with COVID, there's a lot of um, questions and people reaching out in volumes that, you know, you're not no normally used to. So, <clears throat> you know, we have not had much feedback um, from EEC. Um, the clarification that I've been looking for is, um, there is an exemption that exists that uh, if a superintendent of the school systems endorses a program that it could be exempt from having to get that child care licensure. Um, and Kelly said that he was willing to be able to, uh, you know, endorse the program. Um, but when I asked about that specifically, they said they didn't want to make any answers um, because they're still trying to figure out what they're going to do. So at this point in time, we don't know um, how we're going to be able to run the program. Uh, we do know that we could ask uh, the board of health uh, and Jim for a camp license, uh, and that would allow us to run through the end of September. But after that, the way that the state guidelines go, um, the camp licensure would not you know, work past that point at, at this time. Um, we are trying to communicate on the state level um, to see if that's something that, you know, in this unprecedented time, could we possibly look at, you know, using the camp uh, policies and procedures to move forward and do these programs licensed as camps throughout the year. Um, so I don't know at this point in time. Um, so that's kind of where we are um, and what's kind of holding us back from actually signing people up and, um, you know, moving forward with it. Good. That all sounds great. What a great resource we have with um, the movie theater there. Yeah. Um, Jim, do you have anything to say at all? I mean, it sounds like we're still up in the air. As, to so, as Alyssa says, the, the big thing is uh, how do you, how do you license it? How do you consider it? Um, as we mentioned, the camp camp regulations have you know statutory timelines in which a board of health can issue a camp license, and and 
September 30th is kind of, you know, June 1st to September 30th is the time frame. Um, they, they obviously run a very good program. Um, and we walked through the theater this morning. Uh, Tim kind of showed us how they'd run the program up at the theaters. I don't have any issue with it. Um, again, back to <clears throat> making sure we have assigned seats and attendance and the spacing and the math. They, <clears throat> they seem to have, it, it, I haven't seen anything in writing, but certainly as we discussed it this morning, uh, they certainly seem to be able to pull that off in the theater. Um, you can start to pull together some of these different workplace uh, workplace safety standards. You know, one of them allows for uh, up to 25 people in a uh, indoor enclosed space. The theaters are all indoor enclosed space. Uh, they could put 25 persons in one of those theaters each. Um, the halls are marked. So, I mean, it, we're, we're waiting for guidance. Department of Public Health says we may get something from them this Friday. Uh, we're hoping that that's the case. Um, but at this point here, I wouldn't have any reservations based on working with them all these years and, and particularly this summer. Um, even if it, it was allowed to run under some kind of an emergency, if it ran with that same kind of camp framework built into it. I mean, again, you're looking at protecting kids, their health, uh, you know, background checks and all that. All of that stuff is built into the camp program. Uh, if you add the public health protocols that were put in place this summer, um, I think it could run as a safe program. Uh, but I guess I'd feel more comfortable if someone at the state says you license it as this or you consider it as that or this is how you set it up. I guess I'd feel more comfortable being able to say to the board, there are guidelines, frameworks in place to allow these things to happen. So I'm not concerned with Park and Rucks doing it. I'd be happier if the state had a, uh, a framework for which they could do it within. Are, are, is it going to be like lecture halls kind of thing or are they going to be watching movies as I'm no. sure working hard. That's a really cool. great question. <laughs> um, no, so the way that, um, so sure, I guess a lecture hall is a great way to be able to think about it. So each of the kids would have their own assigned seats. Um, they, we actually have to unplug the chairs so they will not be able to stretch wow. out in the recliner. <laughs> Um, but they'll need that electricity to be able to fire up their laptops and, um, you know, things like that. So, uh, each of the kids, like I said, they'll have their assigned seat. Um, each of those seats, um, there'll be two empty seats in between the kids. That's about, it's, oh, it's in between six to seven feet. So it's pretty, pretty far distance. Um, and then all of the seats have those built in, um, table trays so they could use that as a desk. Um, so it really is a really awesome environment to be able to use in this emergency case, um, you know, to run a program. So the way that it'll work is, um, the school has very specific schedules on what the kids are supposed to do. And we are going to follow that schedule to a T. So if they're supposed to be in homeroom and have a check-in, then we'll make sure that they're in homeroom. And then if they need to go to math class, then, you know, make sure that they've got that all set up. We'll do snack times and uh, recess breaks just exactly the way that the schools do. Um, because one of the big issues I think that came up with um, spring is that there was no schedule or um, any sense of um, what's the word hey, I'm looking for? Go ahead. Say it. No, what? <laughs> Just kidding. No, the, the kids, like there was, uh, everybody was kind of on their own schedule. And so I think that really uh, affected some of the, the, you know, the way that the, the learning had uh, occurred over, um, you know, the, the course of the spring. Uh, that and, you know, everybody's in a, a crazy headspace just for the fact that, you know, we're in a pandemic that we haven't seen anything like this in over 100 years. So none of us have probably, you know, seen this in our lifetime. There's very few people. Um, so this Gino. way, what's that? Gino is there. Oh, Gino. <laughs> Wait um, a minute. No, I'm just kidding. My birthday, just was, kidding. My birthday was Sunday. And everybody oh. asked me how old I am. I told them I'm only 34. There and and they, they, they even laugh. They didn't even laugh. You don't laugh. Okay. I get you. Uh, Alicia, okay. is the public going to have access to the cinemas while the kids are there? 
So that's the piece that we're trying to figure out. When we first talked to them, um, the agreement was um, no, that we would be able to uh, have the space until the program ends around like 2, 2.30. Um, and then they would open it to afternoon and evening showings. Um, but I guess at this point in time, um, they don't really, I, I didn't know this. This is, you learn something new every day. Um, the movie companies control what times uh, that the movies are being shown. I never knew that. Really? Yeah. Um, so uh, there will be uh, some movies that will start at like 11, 1130. But what we're going to do is we're going to partition off a wall. Um, so there's no mingling between the public and our kids will be completely cordoned off in a different section of the building. Um, and we'll actually have uh, a program aid that will monitor uh, that section just to make sure that there's, you know, no intermingling whatsoever. Make sure the kids don't sneak over to the movie. Yes, <laughs> that's probably <laughs> proper, proper identification. Um, do, you know, do you know how many kids you can accommodate? Um, so at this point in time, we've, we've got four theaters that were guaranteed. So that's around like a hundred. Wow. Um, so if we needed to go more, I think at this point in time, we opened a wait list and I think we were around 43 this morning. Um, so, you know, if we start encroaching on that, um, hundred level, uh, we'll go back and we'll talk to the theater and try to work something out or, you know, maybe we have to find a, a different location, but with a different location that brings in, you know, more complexity about needing more staff and, you know, yeah. all of that. Excuse me. You're, you're going to be charging uh, basically tuition for, for this. So this is not really accessible to everybody who's doing remote learning. Those, but just those who can afford to pay the fee. Correct? No, so uh, no. Um, no. So it is a fee based program. You are correct because we do, um, you know, have staff that we're going to have to pay. We have utilities that we're going to have to pay for the building. Um, but all those costs, you know, part of our mission statement is that we have to, we're trying to do programs at the lowest cost that we possibly can. Um, so right now we're trying to keep the cost somewhere around 40 to $60 a day. Um, so if you're doing a three day program, it ends up being somewhere around like 180. Um, sure. And so this is the next piece that we have to try to figure out. We do have scholarship mm -hmm. funds that are available that uh, we use for camp program, program sorry, programming in the summertime. Um, but I think uh, those funds are going to run down really quickly. So we've got to figure out some way to be able to, um, you know, come up with some sort of uh, either funding mechanism for that or, um, you know, if anybody's watching that wants to donate so kids can go to the remote learning program, that'd be awesome. Um, but at this point in time, there are scholarships available, um, but that's only until the money runs out. What, what I'm touching on here is out of the scope of, of the Board of Health, but it could slip into the jurisdiction of the schools because, what you're doing is you're 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 basically charging the public uh, for their children to access public school uh, operations. Correct. That's what no, you're doing. We're not. So what we're doing is we're providing supervision while the kids are, um, you know, going through their work day. Uh, work day, listen to me. Um, their school day, uh, so that the parents can be at work. No, I, I know what your aim is, but the fact of the matter is that the material that you're electronically sending to them or hooking on is actually coming from the public schools. That's, so, so it's basically you're not acting as an autonomous educational or child care center. You're an extension of the school. And I, you know, this is nothing to do with the Board of Health. It, it's, 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 it's part of Jim's purview to you know, help you <clears throat> get it done, but it's going to be interesting to see how how the state views this. That's, that's you know, I'm just wondering. <laughs> I'm not Mike, against it. It's Mike, just a, I'm just, yeah. yeah uh, it, especially it, if Dr. Clenchy signs off on it, if they go that route. Yeah, but he hasn't you signed know, off on it. I'm not, I'm not against it. I hope he does sign off on it. Just that if <clears throat> it just. Yeah, no, I'm just thinking for budget purposes, uh, school committee might be able, you know, if it's endorsed, uh, might be able to contribute. I, 
I, it, if the town starts sponsoring it themselves or the, the school department, you know, it, this is not in our purview. It's, this is off our topic. Yeah. So I just, right. I, I just have, have had some experience with, with uh, something like this where a public school did provide or try to provide facilities or not facilities, provide material. Uh, through uh, video, audio, video to enhance learning for their for overflow and whatever, and it became part of a school program, as opposed to a private operation. You would be hired then as a contractor, but I don't want to get into your business, Alicia. So it's yeah, it's, it's more a different like a, story. It's yeah, more, it's more like how you're going to separate the school from the park and rec earning some money. Right. Yeah. That's. Yeah. yeah, much um, rather. Yeah. Should be interesting to see and, how this works. And this is, it's only for the hybrid. Uh, students are opted for the hybrid model. It's not for the remote. The kids remote. are going all remote. Well, that's another issue that, you know, we'll wait and see what they come up with. I don't want to even get near. It sounds like a great idea. Um, yeah. And how are you guys with staffing um, at Camp T this summer? I guess it's a little too late for that now, but. You, yeah. You, yeah. So staffing wise, um, you know, at this point in time, we are going to repost for a nurse and custodian um, because that's something that was part of the camp model um, that we definitely want uh, on site regardless, uh, you know, if COVID wasn't happening. So um, that we're going to put out relatively soon um, because our camp nurse and custodian have other jobs that they have to go back to. So for this, it was just a seasonal position for them. So um, we will be posting for that. And um, again, we're trying to figure out with the program aides um, or, you know, the high school or college age students that would be helping with the program because there's going to be different requirements if it is a um, like a camp license extension or if it's going to be an EEC child care license program. There's other uh, certifications and trainings that would need to happen. So that's why, you know, we're really feeling the pressure of needing to know an answer from EEC where we need to go uh, at this point in time, because we do have to start hiring people. Um, Louise, uh, do you know, Kevin, Mike, anybody have any other comments at all? Uh, I think they're doing a good job. Thank you for everything you do. Thanks, Gino. Yeah, I, I think it sounds like a great idea. Yeah, it's awesome. Yep. Uh, just one one comment. Uh, have you thought about trying to leverage some of the local uh, daycare folks in town that have their license and see if they're interested in getting involved? Uh, no, that's an interesting idea. Um, yeah, we'll, uh, I guess, run that through the brainstorming mill tomorrow. <laughs> or there, uh, I think there's a state, a state site where you can see everybody who's... Um, yeah. Certified, um, or even or even Tigers Den too. We have actually had yeah. a lot of conversations with Martha from Tigers Den. Um, so they weren't sure if they were going to be able to run Tigers Den at all this year. Um, so you know, Martha's amazing, and we definitely were like, well, you know, we'll see if you can come run our program for us. But uh, we can't afford Martha. <laughs> <laughs> She's been around for a while and uh, has a lot of experience. So, um, but they are going to end up running Tiger's Den as a, um, I don't know if they're going to be able to do the full be care, before care and after care. Um, but I do know that they're definitely going to move forward with some version of Tiger's Den um, this year for sure. Good. All right. Other questions and comments for Alicia? All right, great job, Alicia, doing uh, Thank you. the flu clinic, Tiger's Den, not Tiger's Den, the Camp T, and, and now this um, remote learning program. Great, yep. really nice, really nice. All right, so going to move on to administrative minutes or matters. Um, Bye. <laughs> thank you. Have a good day, honey. Hi, Gino. Bye, bye, honey. Thank you for coming. Um. So we already did Jim, the COVID minute update um, with Jim. Anything else you wanted to mention about COVID at all, Jim? Nope. Uh, like I said, we'll, we'll wait till Friday, see what the state has to bring with the remote learning sites. And um, I'll shoot you an email if something uh, earth shattering comes out of it. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. 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 Thank
Great. Um, do we have anything from Scott at all, Janet? I mean, I, I know two weeks ago they were doing well. In I spoke with Scott um, about an hour and a half ago. He said he really didn't have anything to um, to add. He thought there had been one new case since Friday. I think he said. Um, but otherwise, he felt he feels that Littleton's in a good place, and they're doing well getting their um, PPE, and yep. um, that was it. He's feeling pretty good, and he's going to um, be with us next Wednesday. Great. All right. So, um, can we review the complainant's letter and write the letter of response? Um, you had some new information today that she actually did not. Um, file anything with the um, Attorney General. She just used the form. That's correct. She contacted me um, the morning after our last meeting to say that she had used the Attorney General's form um, to mail to the town clerk, but she had not actually submitted it to the attorney general. So, um, so we don't have to send a letter to the attorney general. We'll just respond. Um, and she, she obviously saw on the video um, that uh, the board is gonna do a revote of the reorganization. And, um, and then that will uh, resolve her issue. That's very good. So we're not going to send this draft to her that you sent out August 13th. We're just going to revote, and then do we have to send her revote, right? And then I'll just send her an email, and she can. Um, I'm sure she's she can watch watching. She can watch, she can watch the meeting. Anyway. She can watch the meeting. Right. All right. So, are you guys ready to revote for the reorganization of the board? Right. Yes. Yes. Okay. Uh, I'd like to make we've got a full um we've got a full board here tonight, so correct. You wanna say something you are okay, I'd like to make a motion to uh, uh, nominate Lee as a chairman of the board. Second I didn't I didn't hear that um he Gino said he wanted to nominate Lisa, he wanted to get nominated. Okay. You want me to repeat it? I repeat it. I make a motion to nominate Lisa as a chairman of the Board of Health in Littleton. And so and you I'll have to ask. <laughs> okay, so Mike seconds? Yes, I did second it. Okay, um, do a roll call. This is weird. I think Louise no. should have been doing this. No problem. <laughs> Oh, right. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Kevin? Uh, Kevin Baker, yes. Uh, Gino? I uh, say yes, Gino. Louise? Louise Nichols, yes. And Mike Zeldin? Mike Zeldin, yes. And I guess I'll say yes, too. <laughs> it's unanimous. Okay. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to nominate as a vice chairman. Okay. Who? My friend. You know who? <laughs> Drum roll, please. Uh, Do you have a motion to nominate somebody for vice, Gino? Yes. Kevin? <sighs> Is he there? Yeah, I'm here. Are you accepting the nomination, Mr. Kevin? Young man? We'll accept it. I will accept it, sir. Beer, make it look like you, look, you want to be old now. You want to be old with a beer? <laughs> yeah. So you accepting it? Uh, yeah. If there's a second. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Is there, is there a second? That's second. Everybody second, I guess. Is there another motion? Is there I make, a, I, make, I make a motion that. Uh, <clears throat> that uh, I nominate Louise Nichols for vice chairperson for the Board of Health. No, 
The nomination was made to make a... It was never seconded. There wasn't a second, you know. There's no second. I'll, se I'll second it. He seconded it. Seconded for I asked him to, if he agreed to be the vice chairman. He said yes. Yeah, you asked, he accepted your nomination, Gino. It wasn't, get, Kevin seconded. So is it, so we'll do a roll call for um, Kevin as um, vice. So um, Kevin, again, uh, Gino? Yes, Gino, yes, yes. Louise? Louise Nichols, no. Mike Zeldin? Mike Zeldin, no. Lisa Flanagan, no. So, Mike, did you want to make a motion? Make a motion that Louise, I nominate Louise Nichols for the position of vice chairperson for the Board of Health. And I will second it. So, roll call. Gino? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Kevin? Kevin Baker, yes. <laughs> Uh, Louise Nichols, you vote for yourself? Okay, <laughs> Louise Nichols, yes. <laughs> uh, Mike Zeldin? Mike Zeldin, yes. Lisa Flanagan, yes. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. you get that, Janet? Nice try, Gino. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> I did. I've got it. Thanks. Okay. All right. So, do um, we need to nominate? Um, we have to clerk? do the clerk, clerk again. Or? I'll make a nomination to uh, for Mike Zeldin to be clerk. I'll second. Wait, wait, uh, Ke Kevin, you're supposed to leap up at this moment. What's that? You're supposed to leap up at this moment. Why are you? So yeah. what? To, you be be clerk. to be clerk. To be clerk? No, I want to be clerk. Oh, okay. I, I'm sorry. Oh, I thought you're. He's I, been clerk before. Were you clerk last time? We're actually doing this. We're actually okay, doing I'm it. So, all I'm wrong. sorry. I didn't know Mike, that. We're actually doing it all wrong. The vice okay, it's okay. It's fine. Chair. I'll write the letter. The Don't worry. I'll write, to vice chair. I'll write the letter. Not the whoever word. was a member is supposed to yeah, go okay. to. All right. You know, that's how it's supposed to go. But whatever. All right. It's fine. I get it. This is how things run around here. I don't believe this. Um. I haven't seen a single board that's done it that way, but she has been on the board for like three decades. It's been happening that way forever. Uh, oh, it's all good. Okay, so um, there's a motion to make Mike clerk. Is there a second? second? Yeah. Okay, so we'll do a roll call. So Kevin Baker. Kevin Baker, yes. You know. You know yes. Yes. I'm sorry. My you know, I didn't hear you. You didn't hear me? I didn't hear you. I said, Gino, yes. Okay. Louise Nichols? Louise Nichols, yes. Mike, do you vote for yourself? Yeah, this time. Mike Zeldin, yes. <laughs> he votes twice. And Lisa Flanagan, yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. Lisa, Please. have you written up uh, job descriptions for each role? Did I what? Read yeah, up for, job job for myself? No, for the, for the roles, for the vice chair and clerk and responsibilities that can help us move the chains forward and help manage. Sure. A little bit. I'll look into those. Um, next, we have member comments. Does anybody have any comments? Kevin? Absolutely not. Yes, you do. All right. Anybody else? I'm all set. All set. Mike's all set. Gino's all set. I'm all set. I'm in a minority. <laughs> um, I have a question. Um, Cindy, Natalie, and, and maybe Jim can help us with this. I'm not sure um, if there is an actual applicant. But um, there was a question regarding the process of how to go about getting a cosmetic tattoo license in town. And our um, bylaws are from 2020, 2001. So they're already like almost 20 years old. So I know that it's not a priority right now, Jim. But do you know if anything has changed that much in tattooing? Or um, is that something that we need to look at? So I went looking kind of quickly to see if you had had regulations. In 2001, Massachusetts Association of Health Boards 
put together uh, model regulations for boards to adopt because it was uh, like the year before uh, they changed the general laws. I guess at some point the general laws were very restrictive about who could do tattooing. Uh, so they that law got tossed and then everyone was kind of scrambling for how you would uh, regulate tattooing. So it, I don't know, it, Janet, is it in the bylaws somewhere? Because 2001 sounds like the time at which... Um, I, I, looked, I looked into it, yeah. And, and so there are there are bylaws on the books, and then from two thousand one. Yes. Okay. Like, like, so those would be the, the most up to date at this point, and they're pretty extensive. Yeah. So yeah. Where did you find those? Because I, I like as I looked quickly and I couldn't find them. Um, I had it in our packet. It's way at the. It's like one of the last twenty pages. Of the. Um, um, of our of our notebook. Board of health binders. Okay. Yeah. Good. So uh, maybe again I can get a copy of those, and because uh, I think I have a call from somebody who was asking what the regs are. Uh, and again, I was trying to look to see if you had them or not, but that 2001 would have been the time frame that they put those out. And a lot of boards just adopted the model rigs because they were pretty extensive and they, yeah, they were yeah. good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Like I said, I don't know if there is an applicant, but Cindy Napoli asked me um, about that. Um, and I, uh, Gino, I know you and Cindy have quest had some questions about the VFW reopening. You know, Frozen? Or is he? Oh, no, there he is. Um, can you just go over a little bit about that, um, Jim? I think that it's the capacity and the food and what the state regulations have for reopening. And it's a bar, too, right? So bars aren't open just yet. Yep. So the um, right now, bars aren't allowed to be open. Uh, and, and bars and private clubs aren't allowed to be open. So I think that's where the VFW falls. I, I've never been in there, so I don't know if they prepare food. Um, no. That is, uh, okay. So at this point until phase four, uh, they wouldn't be able to operate the bar there at the um, the club. Mm -hmm. um, and what if they brought in food? Um, I, I, I think as a patron, you have to purchase it too. Well, it has to be prepared on site. Okay. That's the, so I can send you the latest uh, wor uh, say, uh, workplace safety standards. There was there were some issues with um, bar rooms putting like pretzels and chips on the bar and saying, "Hey, we're providing food," and it right. really yep. wasn't cutting it. So I think a was it a b c c or a b b c or whatever it is, the Alcoholic yep. Control Commission. They were kind of cracking down on you know who's doing what and, and trying to enforce the um, uh, the state's workplace safety standards kind of backwards. That you can serve alcohol at a restaurant. People have to be seated. You have to serve food with the alcohol, uh, but you have to prepare the food on site. All right, um, Brian, um, any hands raised at all for um, public comments? Uh, Madam Chair, I do not see any hands raised. Okay. Um, we, uh, the announcement that we're gonna be having um, a Board of Health School Committee joint meeting next Wednesday at seven o'clock. Jim said you can be there, Scott. And it's gonna it's open for people for with questions. Everybody know about that. No. Right, Send us an email. I think we already did, didn't we, Janet? Yes, I sent out the email. Yeah. So we're gonna have a joint. Um, you know, I think she sent it out yesterday because Mike and okay. I attended, Mike and I attended a working session on Monday. So Janet probably either sent it Monday or Tuesday. And there will be a joint Board of Health, I'll make the announcement now, um, there'll be a joint um, Board of Health meeting, Board of Health um, School Committee meeting uh, next Wednesday at 7 o'clock. Um, Which is September 2nd. September 2nd. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions at all? Or comments or anything like that? No problem. We'll see you on the September 2nd. Well, congratu congratulations on <clears throat> being nominated and winning the president, the chairmanship of this committee twice. Thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, the second term. Yes. <laughs> 12 more years. My first, term, yes. my first term was a month. 12 more years. Yes, of course. Uh, okay. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting. Second. 
Okay. Roll call. Um, Kevin. Ambiguous. Uh, Gino. Yes, Gino. Yes. Thank you. Please, Louise. Louise Nichols. Yes. And Mike. Mike Selden. Yes. And Lisa Flanagan. Yes. Good night. Thanks, guys.